So today we are continuing our series called Vision Sundays. Okay, look to your neighbor and say Vision Sundays. And this is the last week of this series, Vision Sundays. And so today I would like, I thought it would be good to, I'm going to share a little bit of a recap of all of the amazing things that we, that the amazing things we've learned the last five weeks. So I'm going to do a bit of a recap as well as kind of share some of the things that I've really, God has really pointed out to me in a lot of the scriptures that we've been reading throughout this series. So if you have your Bibles, turn them to Colossians 3. Colossians 3. If you don't have your Bibles, that's okay. We'll have it on the screens for you. Um, Colossians 3, verse 1 and 4. So I am going, all of these scriptures that I am sharing today, you have heard the last five weeks. So, you know, just know like, oh, well, I think I've heard this before. We're going to, we're going to recap everything that God has been saying and all that we've been learning. And also I want to share some new things as well. So Colossians 3, starting in verse 1. It says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So point number one today, if you're taking notes, living with spiritual vision is seeing the unseen. So living with spiritual vision is seeing the unseen. We see in Colossians that he's talking about not to think about the things of this world, not to see things as they appear, but to set your sights on the realities of heaven, to set your sights on what is happening, happening spiritually. I think oftentimes we see people, we see situations, and we see circumstances as is. I think most of the time we see people as they appear, we see circumstances as they appear, and we see situations as they appear someone says something hurtful to us and we mark that person off as mean okay someone says something hurtful to us something someone says something insensitive and what we do is we see it as is in the natural you said something mean to me so you're mean and I am crossing I am deleting your contact and I am not going to your small group you are mean right <laughs> we have a bad morning Who's had a bad morning before? Okay, yeah. We have a bad morning, and we complain, and we just prepare ourselves that it's going to be a bad day. Uh, have you ever said this? If this is how the morning is starting, oh, today is going to be rough. We have a bad morning, and what we do is we go, okay, well, if it's a bad morning, then it's probably going to be a bad day. Yeah. We complain, and we prepare ourselves for a bad day. Things don't go our way. When things don't go our way, we, all, we instantly feel discouraged and hopeless. Well, if this isn't happening, then that must mean that that will never happen. Well, if this isn't happening or if this family member isn't changing, then I guess it's time to cut, cut them off. We see things when they don't go our way. We instantly have this response of, well, I mean, what it seems like is, we see things as is, and we instantly get discouraged and hopeless. Someone flakes on us. How many of you guys have been flaked? Who can admit that sometimes you're a flake? Okay, frosted flakes anywhere. And someone flakes on us, and we talk bad about them, and we instantly say, well, I can't trust anyone anymore. We see things as is. And what I want you to understand today, that as people of God, we are called to live with spiritual vision, meaning we don't see things as they appear. We don't see things as is. We have a different lens that we look through as people of God. We will always respond wrong when we see things as is instead of looking through our spiritual lens. We will always respond wrong when we see things as is, instead of looking through our spiritual lens. I want to read this scripture, Matthew 9, verse 35 and 36. 
our pastor shared this scripture with us the very first Sunday of this series. This is our theme scripture for Church of the Harvest. It says, Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. So what I want you to see here is that Jesus didn't just look at this crowd as crazy, needy people. He didn't see these people as they appeared. He saw spiritually that they were like sheep without a shepherd. He saw people through the spiritual lens that these people are crazy and they're needy because they're confused and helpless and they don't have a shepherd. So how can we apply this when it comes to looking at people? Instead of marking someone off because of a hurtful thing they said or did, take a moment to think about what is happening spiritually. What this is going to take, church, is this is going to take us not to be so quick to respond all the time. Because when you're so quick and you respond to something as is, you'll get it wrong. God has called us to look through a spiritual lens, and sometimes what that takes is a moment to take a step back and see what's happening spiritually so that we can respond right. Perhaps that person that is being mean to you, maybe they're going through something in their life. Perhaps they are confused and helpless. Perhaps they are going through something in their life, and perhaps they need encouragement today. Or... There's there and or honestly and or spiritually what is happening is the enemy is using this hurtful thing that somebody said to you to derail your entire day to get you talking and thinking about it all day long so that you miss that God really wants you to encourage your co-workers today instead of venting. We have to, living with this spiritual lens of saying, I'm looking at things, not as just as they appear, but also spiritually what is happening. The Bible says that our battle is not against flesh and blood. So I can assure you that when something is coming against you, even though it might have a human face on it, that's the enemy. And it's not to look at the person and say, wow, you're being used by the devil. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, <laughs> that's, not, that's not Christian either. What I'm saying is, I'm saying take a step back and say, okay, spiritually, what, what is happening here? Spiritually, what is happening here? Is this the enemy trying to distract me from my purpose today? Is this the enemy using this one hurtful thing to get me wrapped up in venting and nonsense that I miss what God is asking me to do? Or also, is this the enemy trying to mark someone off that God actually wants to use me to help? Is this the enemy getting me to try and mark somebody off that really God has put them in my life for a reason? And if we would just take a moment to not get so caught up in what we see as is. And we would take a moment to look through our spiritual lens. See, what this does is that this allows us to have grace for people. This allows us to have grace for people. If, if you're someone in here and you're like, I struggle with that. When people say something hurtful to me, I get triggered and I just, I, you know, I, I fly off the handle or I just can't deal with that or that hurts my feelings too much. I want to challenge you today. Look through the spiritual lens of what is happening. And realize that this is, our battle is not against one another. Our battle is against the enemy. And also God is doing something in us at all times. So I want you to look through your spiritual lens. Walking with spiritual vision allows us to recognize the enemy and have more grace for one another. In 2 Corinthians 4.18, it says, So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. So we talked about how Jesus teaches us to see people differently, to see people through a spiritual lens. But now I want to talk about 
situations and circumstances. How we see situations and circumstances that come up in our life, are we looking at them through a spiritual lens or are we responding to them as they appear? What I love about this scripture is it says to fix our gaze on the things that are not seen when troubles come. So instead of letting a tough morning ruin your whole day, could you take a moment to think about what is happening spiritually? That perhaps the obstacles you're facing is God trying to get your attention. That perhaps the obstacles you are facing that morning is God trying to get your attention. Or perhaps the Lord is wanting to use you to teach your family how to choose joy in the midst of obstacles. We have to get better at this, seeing things through a spiritual lens, seeing, okay, this, I, I'm, I, I'm, I woke up late, I slept through my alarm, Everyone's, everyone needs me, I can't get ready, I'm late for work. I, have you ever woke up and like your phone is getting blown up and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not, this is, no, you know, I, I'm not there yet. We wake up with a, a, in a bad morning and we face these obstacles. And I want to tell you, church, that perhaps spiritually, God is trying to tell you something. God is trying to use you in these moments. And if we respond wrong, we will miss it. If we see it as it appears, as I don't know why this is happening to me, I don't know why, if we blame our spouse, if we blame our kids, if we blame our job for why we're having a bad morning, and we continue in that cycle for the rest of the day, we may miss what is happening spiritually, that God purposefully put these obstacles in front of you this morning so that he can use you to teach your family how to respond to obstacles, so that he can get your attention, that's for somebody. You're facing things right now. God is trying to get your attention. We won't stop for a second and say, okay, God, what are you doing? We won't. And then we're, but we're mad at God for why this is happening. Look through your spiritual lens and see God. Say, God, what are you doing? This was a rough morning, but I'm not going to let it ruin my whole day. Spiritually, what are you doing right now? Let me, I, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to do what the scripture says and set my sights on the things that are not seen. Live with spiritual vision because those are the things that last forever. Bad days and good days are going to come and go. They're going to come and go. But the things that are going to last forever are the seeds that you sow when you look through that, that spiritual lens and you're able to respond correctly. Instead of immediately allowing your emotions to lead you to discouragement and hopelessness when things aren't going your way, put your spiritual glasses on and see that God is developing perseverance and endurance within you. And if it's not happening, it's because God has something better in store for you. If it's not happening, it's because God has something better in store for you. We do this, and, and, and I... I I want to say we are all human, so emotions are a part of who we are. God created us with emotions. But sometimes mo emotions can lead us to respond so quickly that we don't ever take a moment to look through the spiritual lens, to see spiritually what is happening when things don't go my way. Spiritually what is happening when I really needed that check and I didn't get it spiritually what is happening when I really needed that job and it didn't work out spiritually what is happening when I really wanted that house and I didn't get it the loan got denied spiritually what is happening when I was really hoping hoping that this that inviting my family member to church this one time that that was going to be it and it didn't work out like that listen spiritually what is happening and if we will open up our eyes to what is happen happening spiritually, we will see that when things don't go our way, it's because the word says it's because God is developing perseverance and endurance within us. And I know that's something that we don't want. We're like, I'll just take what I want. It's okay. I'll pass on the perseverance and the endurance. I'll just take what I want. But God knows that you're going to need the perseverance and you're going to need the endurance. So when you do get what you want, when you do find yourself on the other side of the blessing, you have what it takes to stay there. Spiritually, what is happening? If we will open our eyes spiritually, we won't get so discouraged and helpless every single time something doesn't go our way. 
as people of God, we live in the spiritual. We see through the spiritual that when things aren't going our way, we don't live by sight. We live by faith. We don't look at things as they appear. We go, God, you are orchestrating my life and you are doing something. You are doing something. What could be happening spiritually in your life? And you know what? You might not always get it right. You know, I know sometimes I'm like, oh, this is probably happening because of this. And God will be like, no, it's because of this. But listen, I I want you to start thinking about it and just go through. Okay, well, this hasn't happened in my life yet. I wonder why. That hasn't happened in my life yet. Lord, will you help me to see this through a spiritual lens? Maybe it's because you're trying to develop something within me. Maybe, maybe it's because you want to use me in this season to help other people that are in a waiting season. Maybe, maybe you want to do something in my marriage. Maybe you want to do something in my family right now. Maybe you have something better in store for me, Lord. We only look, when we only look in the physical, we miss out on what, what is happening spiritually. And so I want to encourage you as people of faith that we are called to walk and see the things unseen. Living with vision is being aware that there is an enemy that wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And there is a God who wants to be with me, teach me, and use me. So number two today. What God is doing in you is not just for you. What God is doing in you is not just for you. So Ephesians 4, verse 14 through 16, it says, Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of this body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So our God is such an intentional and purposeful God that what he does for one part of the body is meant to infiltrate and impact the rest of the body. So what he does in you as you belong to this body, what he is doing in you right now is meant to infiltrate and impact the rest of the body. God is such an intentional and purposeful God. He is a hit 10 birds with one stone kind of God. This is who our God is. That he will do something in you That he doesn't want to, yes, he wants to do it for you because he loves you, but he also wants it to impact the rest of the body and help the rest of the body grow and become healthy. So God wants to set you free from insecurity for your life and so that you can truly love and cheer on others. God wants to deliver you from your addiction to set you free And so that you can share your story of freedom with the people in your small group. God wants to deliver you from your addiction for you, yes, because he's called us to live a free life. Yes, for you. But also so that you can take that story and share it in your small group and let it impact the rest of the body. God wants to heal you from the pain in your past so that you can live different And so that you can let your guard down and build true godly friendships with others. God wants... God, God wants to heal you from the past, from the, the hurt that you've experienced in your past for you. But also so that you will be healthy and whole and you can start building godly friendships with the rest of the body. God wants to teach you how to persevere, to bless your life, and so that you can teach others how to persevere. That is what, that, what God is doing in your life is meant for you and for the whole body. It's for the whole body. God wants to teach you how to dig deeper in prayer, to bless your life, and so that when you pray for others, you have something to say. 
whatever God is doing in you, it, it should, it is meant to infiltrate and bless the rest of the body. God wants you to overcome your fear so that you can live a peace-filled life and so that you can have the authority and wisdom to lead others to a peace-filled life. It's for the whole body. Pastor Elijah talked about this a couple weeks ago, that sometimes what you need, God will give it to somebody else so that when you come to a small group, someone else has what you need. They can encourage. They can pray. They can share their story and, and help you and lead you. What is God doing in you and how does God want you to use that to impact the rest of the body? I love this scripture because it says that as one part of the body grows, the other parts grow so that it can become healthy, healthy. A healthy body is a growing body. A healthy church is a growing church, not just in numbers, but growing in our understanding and knowledge of Jesus Christ, not just in numbers, but, but in our faith and in, in perseverance as well. And I want to tell you, as someone who belongs to this body, as this church, we want what God is doing in you. We want what God is doing in you. We want you to share that with, with the rest of the body. We want you to get involved in a small group. We want you to share with somebody, you know what? God is doing this in my life. We want you to text somebody. We want you to post about it. We want you to share with the rest of the body so that we can be a healthy and growing body. When we are selfish with what God is doing in us, teaching us, producing in us, and we don't look for ways we can pour into the body. We are missing the point of the church. We are missing the point of the church. We are coming, yes, a church is where we gather. It's where, it's where we worship God. It's where, it's where we hear someone speak. It's where we're encouraged. But I, I, wanna, I wanna tell you that in the word, biblically, the church is more than just a place that we gather. A church is a body. A church belongs to one another. We belong to one another. We are all part of the same body. And I want to encourage you not to be selfish with what God is doing in you. That you would, what God is helping you, and you might say, well, I don't know what to say. I, I, I'm not qualified to speak. You don't have to be qualified to speak. Share what God is doing in your life. You don't have to have all the right things to say. You, when you pray for somebody, it doesn't always have to be this loud prophetic word. Just share what God is doing in your life. And I'm telling you, that's the point of the church, that we would share with one another what God is doing in us so that the rest of the body can be growing and healthy. I bet, no, I, I know, the Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. We have so many similarities in this room of things that we have struggled with, things that we have gone through, things that we have faced in our life. I wonder what this body would look like if we would commit ourselves to sharing what God is doing in us, how, how we could be growing, how the people in this church could be growing leaps and bounds because they have people that are sharing with them, this is how you persevere. You know what, I went through the same thing and this is what God taught me. Hey, let me pray for you today. You know what, here's a scripture that's been, that's been really ministering to me. Let me share this with you. As a body, we are meant to grow. God wants us to be a healthy growing and I love that the scripture says mature body that we would keep pushing each other forward keep pushing each other towards what God is doing I want to share Philippians 1 27 Philippians 1 27 and it says this it says above all you must live as citizens of heaven Conducting yourselves as a manner worthy of the good news about Christ, then whether I come and see you again or only hear about you, I will know that you are standing together with one spirit and one purpose, fighting together for the faith, which is the good news. Number three today, if I can get someone to the keyboard. Number three, above all, we are citizens of heaven. Above all. 
Above all, we are citizens of heaven. I love this scripture. Pastor Elijah, he shared it last week in his message, and I, I was like, there it is. That first line, above, it, above all, we are citizens of heaven. You see, when we follow the patterns of this world, we fight to get ahead of others. That's, that's, what, this world, that's what this world does. When we follow the patterns of this world, we fight to get ahead of others. We get jealous when something good happens for someone else. We write people off when they wrong us. We are picky and choosy about who we're going to forgive and who we're not. When we follow the patterns of this world, this is, this is what we do. This is who we are. We are always talking about ourselves in hopes to gain appreciation and acknowledgement. We see our emotions and our feelings as more important than others. This is what this world is all about. Have you guys lived on planet Earth long enough to see this? We use people's weaknesses and vulnerabilities to make them feel bad about themselves. And we put our lives, our money, our family before everybody else. That's the way of this world that we would not be able to cheer someone else on, that we would look for ways to get ahead, that we would only think about ourselves, our money, our family, that we would put our feelings and our emotions and our interests above other people. But the Bible says that we are not to follow the patterns of this world, and then it also says that we are citizens of heaven. That you and I, when you said yes to Jesus, you died to the ways of this world. You died to the physical world that we live in and that we have to live in until we get to heaven. And you said, I, I, I want to live as a citizen of heaven. What does it look like to be a citizen of heaven? Well, when I was thinking about this, because, you know, I, I want to be practical. I never want to be like, be a citizen of heaven and then not tell you how to do it. So what does it look like to be a citizen of heaven? Well, I started thinking, well, Jesus was not only a citizen of heaven. He was the king of heaven. So he's probably the best example. And as Christians, we are called to be Christ-like, to follow Jesus, to follow how Jesus, Jesus demonstrated it so perfectly and beautifully when he came to earth. He taught us how to live here as a citizen of heaven. And so what did, what did Jesus do? What did Jesus do? Jesus had compassion and grace for all. He even loved and prayed for those that crucified him. That's what it means to be a citizen of heaven. Jesus taught us to bless others and that you cannot be a true disciple of him unless you love others. Jesus spent time with people. He didn't hide from people. Jesus said, if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom, you must serve others. Jesus said to prefer others above yourself. Jesus said, instead of worrying about yourself, to seek first the kingdom above all. Jesus used his words to call out the purpose and gifts in people. Jesus didn't come to condemn people or put shame on people. He came to save. And ultimately, Jesus laid down his life for all. He is the ultimate example of what it means to be a citizen of heaven. He is your example today. He is my example today. If we are to live, if the word says above all else, we are to live as citizens of heaven, let us look to Jesus. Let us look to Jesus who demonstrated so perfectly how to do it. Jesus laid down his life for all. You know, I, I often hear this a lot from Christians. You know, well, if you were the only one on earth, Jesus would have still come and he would have still died just to save you from your sins. And I believe that. I, be, I believe that. But the reality is, he didn't come for just you. I believe that Jesus loves you that much, that he would. But the reality is, he didn't come for just you. He came for all. 
And as citizens of heaven, we don't get to be picky and choosy about who we choose to forgive. Jesus came for all. And Jesus laid down his life for all. Church, let's lay down our lives. Let's lay down our lives for Jesus because he deserves it. But also because there is a city that needs him. There is a city that needs hope. There is a city that needs healing. There are people in your family that need freedom. Jesus laid down his life for people that would never say thank you. And yet we get discouraged when people don't acknowledge and appreciate us. As citizens of heaven, we lay down our life for others. As a citizen of heaven, we look to bless others. We don't look for ways. I, I see this even sometimes in church, you know. People open up or people share. And sometimes people will kind of keep bringing up, oh, well, remember that one time when you said you were struggling with this? And hey, remember that one? No, no. We don't use people's vulnerabilities against them. No, no, no. Jesus used his words to speak life, to speak of the purpose, and to speak of the gifts in other people. And he did it to people that nobody else saw that in them, and yet Jesus saw it in them. And he used his words to call that out in them. Church, as citizens of heaven, let us look to Jesus. Let us submit our lives. Let us lay down our lives so that everyone, let us lay down ourselves, put our own ambition, our own acknowledgement, our own pride aside, and let's say, God, use me to bless your people, because you came for all. You came for all. Will you guys stand up on your feet with me this morning? Have you ever seen a picture of yourself and thought, that doesn't look like me? <laughs> Have you? Does, has anyone figured out yet why? Have you ever seen a picture of yourself and like one eye is like way more, what is that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm like, do I, is, has anyone else experienced that? Have you ever looked at a picture of yourself and you thought, that doesn't look like me? Or have you ever looked at a picture of yourself and thought, oh my gosh, I look so much like my dad in this picture. Or, I look so much like my mom in this picture. I want you to do something right now. If you will just close your eyes. I want you to take a picture of your life. I want you to think about your life right now. I want you to think about your heart. I want, to think of, I want you to think about your mind. I want you to think about how you spend your time. I, wanna, I want you to think about each morning this last week. I want you to ask yourself, do I look like a citizen of heaven? Does that look like a citizen of heaven? Or have I become too influenced by the patterns and the ways of this world that when I look at my life, I don't even see my father anymore. I don't even see Jesus anymore. Or are you looking at your life right now and you say, you know what, I see Jesus. I see Jesus. I see that this looks like Jesus. My life looks like Jesus right now. The way he walked, the way he talked, the way he spent his time, that's, that's what I'm doing. This morning, we're gonna, I'm going to do three different things right now. If I'm going to invite our prayer team up. And um, if you're here today and you need help with your spiritual vision, are you just seeing your life as is? Are you just looking at your life through the, through the physical lens? Are you looking at your situation just from as it appears? If you need help with your spiritual vision today, I want to invite you to come up and get prayer from this prayer team. If you need help, if you say, I'm not looking at my life through the spiritual lens. If you need help with your spiritual, your, your spiritual vision, I want to encourage you to come up. If you are here today and you say, you know what? I need to start contributing more to this body. I, I, I know that what God is doing in me is not just for me. And I need, I need 
to do a better job at sharing with this body what God is doing in me so that other people can be blessed and other people can be set free from what God is doing in me. If that's you today, I want you to come up for prayer as well. And I also want to encourage you to join a small group this week and start being used by God. Um, And lastly, if you're here today and you say, my life doesn't look like Jesus. I know that I'm called to be a citizen of heaven, but right now when I take a picture of my life, it doesn't look like Jesus. I think think I've fallen a little too, too much into the patterns of this world. I think I follow what everyone else is doing instead of doing what I know God has asked us to do, God has asked me to do, and what I know Jesus would do. If that's you, I, I want to invite you to come to our prayer team, and they're going to pray with you in there. They're going to lead you into saying yes to truly following Jesus. So before we move into that, I, I want to pray over all of you guys. Lord, we just thank you so much. Lord, we thank you for all that you are doing. God, we thank you so much. We thank you, Lord, for your example. Jesus, we thank you that you came to earth, the king of heaven. You came to earth and you lived your life and you demonstrated so perfectly what it means for us to live as citizens of heaven. And we thank you that you have now called us to live as citizens of heaven. Lord, and we pray and we ask, Lord Jesus, God, that if there is anything in us, Lord, if there is anything in us, Lord, that follows the patterns of this world, Lord, would you reveal that to us? Lord, we're ready to say yes. We're ready to say yes. Lord, we're ready to walk in who we are as citizens of heaven. Lord, we're ready to say yes to truly following after you, Lord Jesus, and following your example, Lord. God, and we say yes, Lord. We say yes to being part a part of this body, Lord Jesus, that what you are doing in us, Lord, may it bless the rest of this body. Let it bless the person that is sitting in our row. Let it bless the person that we are talking with that small group. Lord, let it bless the people that are serving with us every Sunday. God, what you are doing in us, Lord, let us not be selfish, Lord, with what you are doing in us, Lord, for we know that it is meant for the whole body. Lord, it is meant for the whole body. Lord, we worship you and we honor you today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.